all right so we were talking about this that the response from the body for a pathogen can go in one of the two directions either it can take the path a which is the b cells mediated path primarily or humoral path or the path where the proteins are produced and they take care of the extracellular extra cellular pathogen that is path A. The second path is really for intracellular pathogens and in this case we would have to detect the cell which is infected and then uh, take care of that cell. So, these two paths this response is orchestrated this response is done by T cells. Now, T cells sit here. So, let me make a T cell here. So, the T cell sit here. So, let us say this is a T cell and remember this is a naive T cell which is T helper 0 cell. T helper 0 cell sits here and depending upon the chemical messages to this T cell. So, let us say this is a chemical which is in our example or actually that is true IL 12 interleukin 12 or if this T cell encounters a message which is interleukin 4. Depending upon that this T cell will either become a T helper 2. So, this is T helper 2 or it will become a remember we talked about this one very very often this is our T helper this scary dude this is our T helper this is a cytotoxic T cell. So, actually I did not have to print this here. So, this will become T helper 2. So, we either get a T helper 1 or we get a T helper 2. Why did I say 2 here? This is 1. So, T helper 1 or T helper 2. So, T helper 0 becomes 1 or 2 depending upon what messages are coming to it. Now, we know now we know that the message IL 12 usually comes from the macrophage. So, this is a macrophage it comes from a macrophage when it engulfs the bacteria and what will it engulf which kind of bacteria or pathogens it would engulf it will engulf the pathogens which are sitting in the extracellular tissue right. So, macrophages function is to do phagocytosis. So, the phagocytosis can be done for the pathogens which are sitting in the extracellular tissue. When macrophage it is part of the innate response system we have talked about it go back to the original lectures and listen to it if you have not, but once the macrophage has phagocytosed the pathogen as part of the phagolysosomal activity of path of killing the pathogen there is also secretion of IL 12 this IL 12. So, macrophage is telling the acquired system to bring the to bring the cytotoxic response on. So, macrophage is telling IL 12 will convert T helper 0 into T helper 1 type cell and the T helper 1 type cell would then number 1 we know this from our from our discussions before interferon gamma will be released which would activate the macrophage itself and also the T helper 1 would cause the cytotoxic T cells to become active. So, cytotoxic T cells are these soldier cells which are going to go and really you know angry cells. So, these cells are going to kill the cells they are going to kill the cells which contain the pathogen. On the other hand 
if we receive IL-4 and we don't know which cell sends the IL-4, so we don't know there's a ninja cell, it's a hidden cell. So IL-4 is secreted by some cells which cause the T helper cell to become T helper 2 which would then act on the B cell by secreting interleukin, interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 which then would cause the B cell to become active and the response which would come from the B cell is actually to secrete immunoglobulins and immunoglobulins in turn would fight with the pathogen sitting in the extracellular tissue. So these two are very important things. So who made the choice here? The helper T cell. Somebody influenced the T cell? Yes, macrophage influenced it, another unknown cell influenced it. So there is IL-12 or IL-4 which influenced this cell to go the helper 1 or helper 2 path but it is at the end of the day the helper T cell. Now what could be the mistake? The mistake could be that we want the helper 0 to go helper 1 path instead if it went helper 2 path it is going to kill the reaction. Why? Because now if it goes helper 2 path we are going to try to find the pathogen in the extracellular tissue while it is in the intracellular uh, pathogen and vice versa. So what is a good example of this situation? A good example is lepromatous leprosy. Leprosy is a good example, My, mycobacterium leprae is a good example. Why? Because let us see, mycobacterium leprae likes to go and sit inside the cells, right? So this pathogen like to be inside the cell, it is intracellular pathogen. So what kind of immune response should we mount? What kind of an attack we should do? We should mount the intracellular response. What is that intracellular response? That is IL-12 taking the helper 0 cell to the helper 1. Helper 1 would then cause cytotoxic T cell to become active. Cytotoxic T cell would then go and kill these um, cells. That should be the response, that is the right response. But in case of mycobacterium leprae, in some patients the response becomes wrong. What is that? This T helper cell instead of going towards the pathway for cytotoxicity, it goes to the pathway for the immunoglobulins, B cell pathway. That causes antibodies to be produced, that causes immunoglobulins to be produced. Those immunoglobulins are now sitting, searching in the in, interstitium, searching for what? Searching for the pathogen. Where is the pathogen? Inside the cells. These guys cannot get into the cell. The pathogen sits inside the cell, is happy, does the damage. That is lepromatous leprosy. In other people, same pathogen goes the right path. Cytotoxic T cells are activated. Cytotoxic T cell come and they destroy these cells including the pathogen and the person only develops tuberculous leprosy. Tuberculous leprosy is a, is a milder situation, can be handled easily as compared to lepromatous leprosy which is quite a horrible and dangerous disease. So that is a case where the immune system made a wrong choice all of the autoimmune diseases are actually you can go back to the immune system and see some wrong choice was made. In this particular case the switching that do we mount a cytotoxic response or do we mount a chemical response that switching was incorrect. You would see that in case of allergies the switching becomes bad. Do we have IL-4 or IL-5? Do we have immunoglobulin A or immunoglobulin E? Just having immunoglobulin E in place of A causes the allergic reactions because the benefit of immunoglobulin A is really to cause to hold on to the pathogens in the mucous membranes. So allergens in the mucous membranes and so allergen is stuck at the immune mucous membranes and is cleared out. But if we have immunoglobulin E, immunoglobulin E is going to go and sit down on the mast cells and you can go back to the original innate response and mast cell, it is going to sit down on the mast cell and the same allergen when it attaches to the immunoglobulin E, mast cell would degranulate and spill the histamines in the body and that causes the allergy. So what is the problem there? Incorrect choice, right? So here this is a very important concept that the right choices to be made.